It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Welcome to the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. We're here for the second game of the day between Rust College and Payne College. The winner of this game will take on Florida Memorial in the NAIA final later on this evening. There was one game played earlier today. It was between Edward Waters and Bluefield State. Edward Waters able to come out with a 9-6 victory. They move on to the championship round of the Division II bracket, and they will play Albany State later on today. We're at Riverwalk Ballpark here in downtown Montgomery, Alabama, site of the Black Colors World Series. It's been an exciting time these last three days here at the tournament. I'm Kendrick Marshall along with Caleb Brooks, who will be doing color commentary for me this afternoon. Uh, Caleb, um, what are your impressions of the first game and, and this one coming up today? Yeah, it was a great game earlier today. Uh, Edward Water got up 3-0, to zero, and then Bluefield State able to answer with six unanswered runs to take a 6-3 to three lead, but then a big seventh, a big eighth inning, six runs for the defending champs, Edward Water, is able to come back and get the 9-6 to six win, and then now this one sets up to be a fantastic game here today between Rust College and Payne College. So, Russ, the number one seed, and uh, ended up falling to Florida Memorial day one, but came back and bounced back yesterday with a very impressive performance to end up here in this ball game today, taking on Payne in the winter. We'll see Florida Memorial later on this afternoon, or later on tonight, in that semifinal matchup, trying to get a berth in the championship. So, really looking forward to seeing these two teams fighting to keep their season alive. We're underway in this one, ball one from Devin Tallington. To Denny Daza, the shortstop leadoff batter for Payne College. The 2 0 misses high. Three balls and no strikes. Devin Talenton came on in relief earlier in this Black College World Series for Russ College. He now starts this one. The 3 0 pitch over for strike one. And we've seen that over the last couple of days. A couple of these guys getting these starts and maybe a little bit of adrenaline going here early, a little up in the zone, not able to throw strikes. And, and there's there ball lead four. Off walk. A leadoff walk to start the top of the first for Tallington. This will bring up Joshua Cruz, the second baseman, six-foot senior from Tampa, Florida. And in an elimination game, Every inning matters. Every moment matters to start the game off with a leadoff walk. If you're, if you're paying college, you want to take advantage. I no doubt about it. Don't want to ever put the leadoff guy on with a free base. Throws a wild pitch, and moving into second base is Daza. So we're running already in scoring position with nobody out here in the top of the first inning. All right now, this rust dug out, trying to settle. Tallington down just a little bit. A lot of balls up in the zone. That one getting away from Jalen Thomas, who's been really solid behind the plate so far for this Russ College And Tallington team. misses again, and it's going to elicit a visit by John Bates, the Russ head coach, to try to calm his starting pitcher down. What does it say when the, when the uh, coach had to come out five pitches in, in, into the game. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he just he needs to settle in, and I'm sure that's what he's telling him. And they've already got some 
work going on in the bullpen down there. Looks like that is number five, Craig Randolph, that is getting warmed up for Russ to already come in. But, you know, sometimes you just need to go out there and say, look, man, you know, settle into the ball game. We saw it last game with Bluefield State. You know, once they went out and visited Hedgepeth, he kind of settled into the ball game, put up four straight zeros after uh, just getting a visit that kind of calmed him down, maybe a couple mechanical things that you need to kind of be reminded of as a pitcher. But, uh, hopefully now for Rust, you see Tallington kind of settle into the ball game, start to throw some strikes, and make this Payne College offense have to earn some of these base runners. So two balls and no strikes on the batter, and that misses upstairs three balls and nothing. So Tallington in danger of walking potentially the first two batters of this ball game. The 3-0 pitch is outside, ball four. So the first two reach for Payne College. And action already in the bullpen for Rust, and Tellington might not be long for this one. Alejandro Fernandez, the catcher, is up next for Payne College. He bats with two runners on and nobody out. Just underway here in the first inning. Tallington misses inside, nearly hit Fernandez. But 1 0. A fastball strike over, 1 and 1 the count. And you got to hope that maybe that one right there kind of helps him find that release point and throw some consistent strikes. Obviously looking for a ground ball here. Maybe get a double play, and maybe that'll settle Tallington in a little bit. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a tapper. Back to Tallington. He goes to second for one on the first. That's a double play. 1-6-3 there. Nice job by Tallington. And like I was saying, just get a ground ball. Get two outs. And now you're one pitch away uh, from really getting out of a disastrous start right here in the first inning. That was a big double play needed because Tallington was struggling. The bullpen was warming up here down the left field line, and he was on the cusp of maybe not lasting through the first inning, but able to get the ground ball double play to get one out away from getting out of the inning. You got Allen Evans also work, working in the bullpen. He pitched yesterday for this Rust College team. First pitch strike right there. It's got to be encouraging for that rush dugout as well. Yeah, hopefully that'll settle him down for the rest of this inning and maybe even longer in the game. Go one from Tallington. Swinging a fly ball, hits the right field. Just behind second base, and the oh, second baseman on the Clay. run. Victor Clay making the catch to end the inning. No hits in the inning. A runner left stranded at third base. We go into the bottom of the first inning. No score here at the Black College World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now.
We're back for the bottom of the first inning. No score between Payne and Rush College. Payne had the first two batters reach of the inning, but wiped out on a double play. And Russ was able to get out of the inning unscathed as they bat in the bottom of the first. Russ College, the number one seed in this tournament. They're wearing blue tops with white pinstripes, gray bottom pants with blue pinstripes, with blue hats. Payne College wearing purple tops, silver letters and numbers, white pants, and purple hats. You know, baseball is a sport of superstition, and this is exactly what Rust wore yesterday <laughs> when they got the win. And so I'm wondering if they all said, hey, we're going to wear the exact same thing and see if that can kind of just carry us throughout the rest of this Black College World Series by, you know, wearing the same uniform and just seeing if that superstition can yeah. kind of carry over to a couple of wins. Don't mess with a good thing, right? Ah, exactly. <laughs> so what an inning, though, just then. I mean, really not a great start at all for Tallington, able to settle in. Gets the double play ball, and then a great play there by Victor Cruz over behind first base to haul that one in and get them out of the inning. It uh, wasn't looking like they were going to be able to hold Payne to zero runs there in that first inning, but a really nice job of settling in. Emmanuel Martinez is ready to go. His first pitch of the bottom of the first is a fastball just misses high to Shamar Stapleton. The 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss for a strike. Good velocity coming out of the arm of Martinez. Martinez, a 5'10 junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. A hefty right-hander. One ball and a strike to pitch. Swing and a miss strike two. The velocity on this fastball has really given Stable in trouble. Nice. Some of the best velocity we've seen throughout this tournament coming out of the arm of Emmanuel Martinez. One ball and two strikes to Stapleton. Emmanuel fires. Swing, and there's a shot in the right center field. That's a base hit to go That's up the alleyway. Trouble. Stapleton rounding first on his way to second base with a leadoff double. So after falling behind in the count, Stapleton able to get an extra base hit. Yeah, Martinez maybe went to the fastball one too many times, but you're in a tough spot there calling pitches. The guy hadn't really caught up to that fastball first couple of times. You hear all the tunnels speed the bat up, give him something off speed, but he goes back to the fastball, and after seeing it three times there, Stapleton finally able to time it up, does exactly what you're supposed to do, goes that right center gap and big leadoff double here for Russ College, trying to strike first here in the bottom of the first inning. It'll bring up Malik Berry in. The second baseman, he squares the bunt, gets it down, back to Emmanuel, looks a third, throws that away. The tag is there for the out to cut down Stapleton. Yeah, and, you know, I think Stapleton thought he was just easily going to get to third on the play. Next thing you know, he looked over, and Martinez was turning and firing to third. And great tag over there as well at third base there for Payne College by Camillo Martinez. Not sure if there's any relation between the two. So we saw in the top half of the first inning a double play helping Russ College get out of a jam. You see here, mm -hmm. Emmanuel helping himself throwing out the run at third base on the bunt. But really it all starts with Berrien not placing the bunt where the bunt needed to be placed. You know, anytime you bunt it right back to the pitcher, you're giving him a chance to have an easy play like that. If you get that down the third baseline or down the first baseline, not only is he giving himself a chance to get on first, but Stapleton easily could have gotten to third. Right. So Barron is at first base. And I'm leaning. Emmanuel checks on him. As we talked about the other day when you and I were doing Rust College, I mean, they came into this tournament with 221 stolen bases and only been thrown out 37 times. Uh, this is a team that likes to run. So you know Payne College has to have that in the back of their mind. Probably going to see a lot of checks over to first base. Berrien runs. The pitch is outside. Throw down to second base. Is in time to get him. Berrien cut down on the steal attempt for the second out of the inning. 
Like we talked about, they like to run. You know they're going to run, and, you know, as a catcher, that, that keeps you alert. Nice job right there behind the plate from Alejandro Fernandez to make the throw down to second. It was a perfect throw. And, you know, we saw the other day throw was on the other side of the bag. Russ was able to steal a base. When it was on that side of the bag, the right side, they were able to get the out. And right there, a perfect throw on the first base side of the base, able to get the out there at second, and already two outs here in the first inning. Yeah, two outs, nobody on now. And Martinez misses to count as three balls and no strikes. So the pitcher's able, with the help of their defense, to work out of some tough spots here in the first inning. Emmanuel Martinez from the windup and the pitch. That's outside ball four. He walked him. All three batters so far have reached base, yeah. but nothing to show for it with Stapleton getting thrown out at third on the bunt attempt and then Malik Berrien being thrown out trying to steal second base. So now we'll see if Stone Teague can get something going here with two outs in the inning, left-handed hitter, four-hole batter. Yeah, Teague, the big first baseman, six foot one out of Selmer, Tennessee. He takes a strike. A foul to the left side of the field. Here at Riverwalk Park, dimensions for the field are 333 down the right field line, 373 into right center field, 395 to deep left center field, 314 down the left field line, and 400 to straightaway center field. We've seen a few home runs over the first three days. Had two in our first game of the day. One to right field, one to left field by Edward Waters. A pitch and misses high. One ball and two strikes. And you look at the flag right now, that wind, slight breeze blowing in from right field. So Teague would have to really get a hold of one to get it out. Run the risk of get one up in the air and it hanging out there for the right fielder to be able to make a play. Robinson leads at first base. The pitch by Martinez, swing and a foul at the plate. And that one got Fernandez. Looks like pretty good. He immediately kind of had a reaction and now goes to sit down. And it may have bounced up off the ground and hit him in a little sensitive area, yeah. you might think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it didn't bounce off the ground at all, so that yeah. made it even worse. <laughs> yeah, on the replay, yeah. <laughs> It definitely caught him. Yeah. yeah, you'd much rather hit the ground and take away <laughs> some of that impact. That made it even worse. Yeah, he's back on his feet now, still grimacing in pain a little bit, but there's nothing a trainer can do about that, I don't think. Nice job, though, by Stone Teague to get a piece of that, stay alive in the at-bat. It was a really good two-strike pitch from Emmanuel Martinez, and we've seen these umpires, they've done a great job this week, and all of them have been willing to kind of give an inch or two off the yeah. plate. And we've seen a lot of taking strikes from some of these batters, so a good job by Teague to keep himself alive. The yeah, umpires have definitely favored the pitcher so far in this tournament. One ball and two strikes, the pitch. Just off the outside corner, and Fernandez held it there for a little bit to give the home plate umpire a good look at it. No, but, you know, great job by Martinez. That's exactly where they set up. That's exactly where they wanted that pitch. And he hit the spot about three inches off the plate, trying to get Stone Teague to chase. Nice take by Teague as well. Robinson leads from first base. A very short lead he has over there. Martinez to stretch the pitch. Swing and a high pop foul left side. Hit the seats. These early games has featured a lot of lively crowds, especially with mm -hmm. the school children coming, especially the 9 a.m. games. They bring a lot of energy to the ballpark. Players from all the teams have interacted with them throughout the week. Two balls and two strikes to pitch. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. So Martinez able to work around traffic in the bottom of the first inning. Rush did get one hit in the inning. They leave one. We go into the top of the second inning. It's no score here at the Black Colors World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back for the top half of the second inning, no score between Payne and Russ College. Both teams in the first inning had base runners, but were unable to score. Callington back on for a second inning of work. His first pitch is a strike. Dominique Pays the batter for Payne College. He takes upstairs, one and one to count. Maybe talk during the break how unusual it was to have teams on both sides get base runners and not score. In this tournament, when that happens, it, it normally costs you, but not at least in the first inning it didn't. Yeah, I mean, we had five guys reach first base and no runs to show for it. I mean, a bunt right back to the pitcher that got Stapleton thrown out at third, Barry and thrown out stealing. And, and the There's a line out. drive to center field for a base hit. That's Payne's first hit of the ball game. So Dominique Page starts off the inning with his first hit of the day. Well, you know, when Tallington went to the stretch, that's when he kind of started throwing strikes and throwing a little better yeah. last inning. So it may benefit him to go back to the stretch right here and see if he can get another ground ball double play. Joel Malone now the batter for Payne. He takes one just off the inside corner. Not a bad first pitch there from Tallington. You can tell he settled in, though, and kind of found that arm slot. A lot more around the plate. That one misses inside, you think? I guess. <laughs> I don't like a pretty good pitch. We were just lauding the umpire for being pitcher friendly, but that <laughs> pitch was not pitcher friendly. Yeah, both of them were pretty good. Two balls and nothing. The runner goes to pitch. It's a high pop fly. Shallow left field over is Franks to make the catch one away. And even if he wouldn't have been able to pull that one in, the runner had already kind of gotten all the way back to first. It would have been very difficult for him to get to second before a throw could be made. So not what they were looking for there. It looked like it was a hit and run that was on there with a 2-0 count, which is a great count to do it at. You know you're probably getting a fastball strike from the pitcher. Uh, but what you don't want from your batter that you got there from Joel Malone is popping it up. When you're trying to get the guy in motion, you want that ball on the ground and preferably would like to hit it behind that second baseman over on the right side. Jerry Beto now the batter for Payne with one away here in the top of the second inning. No score. Runner goes again. Pitch is high. Throw down the second base is not in time. 
a, st th a stolen base. That was a great job by Jalen Thomas to make it as close as that even was. That ball was behind the batter. It was an off-speed pitch. And Thomas, if that ball would have been fielded there at second base, it would have been a very close play trying to get Dominic Page. It seemed like the catcher didn't have a good grip on the ball when he threw it mm -hmm. towards second base. Well, that's a tough play for a catcher. And that ball gets in the dirt and goes to the backstop. Now the runner will go from second to third base with one out. Tallington has made life rough on Jalen Thomas through this first part of the game. A couple of spiked balls, a couple of balls way above batter's heads. You know, the one guy that's tried to steal, ball is thrown behind the batter just now. And that's what we were talking about. That's a tough play for a catcher to try to catch, reach over and catch that, get your body, turn your feet underneath you and make – the throw in time, and Thomas did a good job of giving himself a chance on that throw down, but now Page all the way over to third base. Two balls and two strikes now to count. The second inning in a row that Payne College has had a runner in scoring position with a chance to, to get on the board. Collington fires. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ball gets away. The throw down the first in time for the second out of the inning. Really good job right there as well by Tallington to rotate down to home plate. Yeah. You know, ball in the dirt, catcher has to come out, grab it, and watch Tallington know that the runner has a chance to come from third, gets to home, covers home plate, doesn't allow Page to come in, and now you have two outs in the inning and another chance to get out of this with no damage. This will bring up Camilo Martinez, the third baseman. A fastball strike. A rare first pitch strike from Tallington through the first couple of innings of this game. Off speed pitch filed away at the plate. No balls and two strikes. After struggling with the control for this inning, he's just one pitch away from getting out of it again. It's been a weird two innings for Tallington, really. Yeah. He hasn't really been comfortable, hasn't mm -hmm. found the strike zone a lot, but he's able to get into and wiggle out of trouble. No balls and two strikes to pitch. Just missed down and away. One ball and two strikes. That's in the dirt, two and two the count. Yeah, he's kind of struggling with that breaking ball release point. A lot of them have ended up in the dirt in front of Thomas. Thomas doing a great job of blocking. He's been impressive behind the plate to me over these last three days getting to watch him. And like we were talking about, he also runs really, yeah. really well out of the box. You don't normally see that type of speed from a catcher. Very athletic catcher behind the plate. And that miss is high, so the count is full at three and two. Yeah, tried to go back to the off speed there and trying to make too much of an adjustment, that time missing up in the zone. And so from 0-2 to 3-2, this is what you don't want as a pitcher, and this is how you also push your pitch count up as well. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss strike three. Tallington got him swinging to work around the hit, a stolen base, and a wild pitch. We go into the bottom of the second. It's still no score between Payne College and Russ College in the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. 
because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. We're back for the top half for the for the bottom of the second inning between Payne and Russ College. No score. Both teams had traffic on the bases in the early going, but unable to push across a run. Jalen Thomas to lead off the inning. He hits one back to the pitcher. Martinez will field and flip fully out at first base. There have been a ton of half swing outs, you know, back to the pitcher really over these three days, more than you normally see in baseball. Yeah, a lot of hitters don't seem to be ready when they make their commitment to swing. One away for Deshaun Franks. He takes just low. One ball and no strike. Went away here, bottom of the second. Swinging a foul to the right side. The winner of this game will play Florida Memorial later on today in the NAIA final with the winner heading to play tomorrow in the Black Colors World Series championship game. Earlier today, Edward Waters got a big win over Bluefield State in comfort behind fashion to move on to play Albany State in the Division II final that we play today. That pitch misses outside for ball three. And Fernandez, the catcher, might have thought that that was a strike. Sees the reaction, his head was slumped mm -hmm. down. He couldn't believe it was called a ball. The 3-1 pitch by Martinez. Swing and a miss. The count is full. Martinez fires again, fouled away at the plate. Yeah, you can tell Martinez kind of starting to find his rhythm out there. His pace is starting to quicken up a little bit. He's finding his release point, and he's starting to feel really comfortable and feel good about himself out there on the mound. Throwing with a lot more conviction mm -hmm. in this inning especially. The 3-2 pitch, swinging a ground ball to third, fielded by Daza. The throw gets away and into the stands. That's going to be an error. And the runner will move up to second base. Uh, that's one thing about this ballpark. Uh, the, the walls down the lines are not very tall. Uh, and if you throw one away, chances of it getting into the crowd or getting into that dugout are very high. And tough play right there for the third baseman, Camillo Martinez. Ends up skipping it to Malone over there at first. And... So one out base runner on second base here for Russ College and a big chance for the second baseman, Victor Cruz. First baseman playing in, maybe anticipating a bunt from Cruz, who's done that several times during this Black College World Series, especially with runners in scoring position. Now, this Russ team really likes to make the defense have to make plays and move around. That's why they steal so many bases. That's why they're very aggressive when running the bases and 
taking bases, and they also like to play small ball, make you have to move around and get your defense out of position. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that here with Cruz. Looks like they're going to allow him to swing away. Yeah, with one out of the way, it may not be apropos to try to bunt in this situation. So let him swing the bat. Long look in by Martinez. The pitch swing and a miss. Strike two. Runner on at second base. One out. Martinez to stretch the pitch. Swing and a foul to the right into the pain dugout. Yeah, got to be alert. We talked about it the other night. This is not a very deep roster from Payne College. Only 16 listed on the roster. Yeah, the fewest players among any team here at the Black College World Series. Yet they were the number one seed in their bracket. The one-two pitch. Swing and a soft ladder caught by the second baseman, Cruz. And they double up the runner at second base to end the inning. So we go into the top half of the third inning, scoreless between Payne College and Russ College in the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Back for the top half of the third inning between Russ College and Payne College. No score. Two hits total in the ball game. One for each team. A lot of base runners, but no scoring. Tellington back for his third inning of work. He fires and throws ball one. Ray Alexander, the batter for Payne College. He takes low, one and one in the count. Excuse me, two balls and no strikes. A fastball strike. It'll be Alexander, Mark, Daza, and Cruz. As the pitch is fouled away. Back of first over the pain dugout into the seats. He was racing for that foul ball. Yeah, a lot of kids here today, they love those foul balls. They love the souvenir ones that are given away. There's been a T-shirt toss that's really mm -hmm. caused a frenzy in the stands. Two balls and two strikes to pitch. Just off the outside corner. And Thomas got up as if he was going to throw it down to third base anticipating strike three. The 
the three two pitch. That's a base hit to left field. So for the second inning in a row, Payne gets the leadoff batter aboard. Yeah, and you can tell Tallington a little frustrated with not getting that call on the pitch before. He had a few words there for the umpire after he saw that ball get through the infield. Yeah, we can see both teams not too happy with the strike zone so far today. Here's Denny Dodds at a shortstop. He walked his first time up. He takes a strike. Alexander runs. The pitch is hot. Throw down to second base. It hits the runner. Alexander steals the base. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, Thomas got lucky that the ball hit the runner. You'll see it right here. If it doesn't, that ball is getting into right center field and could have been big time trouble. It was definitely going into center field if it didn't hit him in the foot. That throw just kind of got away from Thomas. Tailed on him a little bit. He's made a couple of really good throws from behind the plate over the first two days. Got to start to be getting a little tired back there, though. Third straight day of having to catch and could potentially be catching two games today. They were able to get a win in this one over Payne. That's a good point. Nine any games for this Black Colors World Series. Mm -hmm. There's a catch, you're catching all of them three days in a row at different times of the day, too. As that pitch is swung on and miss, and Thomas will fire down the first for the out. He does a great job of blocking balls, though, behind the plate. And most of the time when you see him block, you see it here. The ball just deadens right there in front of him. I mean, you're squaring up those shoulders, doing what you're supposed to do, letting kind of taking on some of that impact of the ball. And then a strike down to first base for out number one. Like we've talked about, Tallington has had a lot of base runners here so far, but he's worked really well out of this stretch position. That's where he's been able to find that release point, it seems, a little bit easier. Cruz now the better for Payne. He reached his first time up. Runner on his second base, one out here. Top of the third inning, no score. There's been traffic on the bases for the first two and a third inning, but yet no score. Coming from the stretch, the kick in the pitch, in the dirt, stopped by Thomas. Three balls and nothing. Big Alejandro Fernandez waits on deck for pain. And that's upstairs for ball four. So another walk by Tallington. That brings up Fernandez with two on and one out. Yeah, Tallington's kind of been his own worst enemy really so far throughout this ball game. He definitely has been erratic in the strike zone. He's thrown a lot of pitches through these first uh, two in the, in the third inning so far. There Fernandez takes a strike. Brighton Sampson is heading down to the bullpen to start warming up. We saw him throw yesterday a couple of innings. Had some good stuff. We saw the bullpen up and going in the first inning when Thompson was struggling, mm -hmm. so... The second time the bullpen has gotten up today. And he misses way high for ball one. As you mentioned, Caleb, um, Tonington has just not been able to find his release point so far today. He's really struggled with consistency. The throw goes to the shortstop on a pick play. Nowhere near the second base bag. Now, I've, I've seen that a lot here recently I'm watching some college games and high school games and kids turn to throw to second you don't have to throw the ball to second base you know you only have to throw the ball to first base and so you see a lot of guys that'll do that nobody will even be covering the bag and they go ahead and throw it anyways if you don't see anybody there just hold on to that baseball and don't risk throwing it away and you almost had that there you got very lucky that ball ended up going right to the yeah. shortstop there yeah the shortstop Warren definitely wasn't anticipating 
the ball to be thrown at him. Two balls and a strike. The runners go. The pitch is filed away at the plate. So a double steal attempt by Payne trying to get the runners in motion. And I don't think that was a hit and run because the coach seemed to be frustrated with him swinging at that. You know, you're kind of told as a batter, if you see them get a jump the way that they got there, take the pitch. Let the guys yeah. get the base and instead he fouls it off and both the runners have to head back. So very frustrated down there in the third base coaching box. Yeah, sometimes with the runners on the move can be a distraction to the batter. Two balls and two strikes to Fernandez. The pitch. Swing on the ground ball to third. Fielded by DeMar. The throw goes to first base in time for the out. Runners advance 90 feet to second and third base. But see, there's the difference. If you go ahead and allow those guys to steal. That's a, that's a run. You're scoring a run there in that situation. But a really good play there by DeMar. He didn't panic. Obviously wanted to get the double play. But knocks the ball down calmly fields it, makes a good throw over to first, and now you're still one pitch away from getting out of this and putting up another zero on the board. And it would be one of the craziest three straight innings of zeros <laughs> that we've seen from a pitcher with what Tallington has done yeah. here in this game. But you've got to give him a lot of credit. He has not let any of it frustrate him. He has continu continued to just settle in, throw strikes, and find a way to get outs. Here's Lemos. It's a high pop fly. Behind second base, Cruz is there to make the call and the catch. And the inning is over. So once again, Payne College gets runners on base but unable to score as they're blanked for the third inning. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. It's still no score in this 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. We're here for the bottom of the third inning between Payne College and Russ College. No score in the game. Three hits combined. A bunch of base runners, but no runs have scored so far. Unusual for a game to have this many base runners, yet no team able to push a run across. Yeah, you just don't see that very often. It has been a uh, very interesting start to this game, and if you showed somebody the box score and kind of took them through the highlights the first couple of innings, they'd be thinking it's surely a couple of runs of score. Mm -hmm. But both pitchers have done a good job of working out of some of the trouble that they've gotten themselves into. And now we'll see Jalik DeMar step up to hit. Here's Jalik DeMar, the third baseman. He takes up and in. One and one to count. Emmanuel Martinez on his third inning of work. Just like Tallington, his predecessor, he has found himself in trouble but able to work out of it. Ground ball to shortstop. 
Daza fields and throws him out. One away. Now, what's been impressive about Martinez is he really has just gone after these guys with a fastball. Not a ton of off-speed stuff. He's using that velocity, using some movement. And right now, it's been tough for this Russ College team to barrel him up consistently. And this is a, a team that scores a lot of runs. They've averaged a lot of runs throughout the year. And we saw the other day Florida Memorial's pitching was able to hold them down. And then they scored a bunch yesterday. But today... So far, have just not been able to get much going when they have runners on base. Here's the Merriam Warren, the batter for Russ College. Two balls and no strikes to count to him. Emmanuel Martinez from the windup. And the pitch just misses off the outside corner for ball three. And once again, Fernandez holding that ball where he caught it to give the umpire a really good look at it. The 3-0 pitch. That's high for ball four. Well, and sometimes when you do that as a catcher, too, this, it's your way of saying something without saying something. Yeah. You know, it's kind of letting the umpire know without saying any words. You know, I think you missed that one. And it could backfire against you with the catcher. Like, you may not get that close pitch next time. Yeah, you don't want to do it too many times. You know, you want to make sure you have a good relationship with that guy behind the plate. You, know, you don't see it on TV when you watch these games, but umpires and catchers are always talking to each other. And, you know, as a catcher, it is your job to create a good relationship. You never know if that's going to steal a call or two during the game. And, you know, if your coach gets upset, you can kind of help calm the situation yeah. down because you're that kind of liaison between the two of them. So, that relationship is really important, but you'll see catchers sometimes. If they get that good relationship, they'll kind of stick that pitch a little bit more, and it's you know, just their way without having to turn around, say anything, or, you know, be disrespectful to the umpire of, you know, hey, take a better look at this one next time you see it there. And speaking of leadership from a catcher, Fernandez is going to go out there and talk to Martinez. He's walked the leadoff batter, and, and then now he's thrown two balls to the to Shamar Stapleton to fall behind the count, no balls, and Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, Stapleton hit a double to lead off the ball game. We thought for sure that's going to lead to a run. And craziness happened after that as Barry and bunted the ball right back to the pitcher. They threw Stapleton out at third, and then Barry was thrown out stealing. And then Robinson drew a walk, and Stone Teague struck out, and that's how they were able to get out of the first inning. But you thought that leadoff double would allow Russ to do some damage there in inning number one, and a great job by Martinez to work around that. And a swing and a miss on the pitch. Two balls and one strike now. And you saw Fernandez kind of give that seat. Look, yeah. throw it over the plate. You know, they hadn't really barreled up anything, and we need strikes. Just one hit so far given up by Martinez. Yeah, can't defend the walks. That was the one thing. Runner goes. Defend. Throw down to second base is in time to get him. And the second base umpire took a long time before he made that call. And that's going to get Coach John Bates out of the dugout. Yeah, John Bates is saying, like, you got to have more conviction with the call on the replay. It yeah. looked like he was safe. Yeah. It definitely looked like he beat the tag applied by Daza. And on the replay, the umpire had to really work himself to get in the position to even make the call. So he might not have seen the runner get in ahead of the tag. Yeah, he beat that throw by... Good little bit. It's tough, tough missed call there for Russ College. And then something is going on over at second base as well as the shortstop. Denny Daza trying to stretch out his calf or something after the play. Maybe got slid, maybe got spiked yeah. as he went into him. Not sure, but a little bit of arguing. Not going to affect anything as once that call is made, there's no replay. And he did, yeah, right in the leg. Nice job, though, by Daza to, to sell it with the tag. And that was a big missed call for Rust. It's it Stapleton now will reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny how it works out where you get a runner caught stealing, then the, the batter either walks or get a base hit. Here's Malik Berrien now. 
with two outs and a runner on. And you got to give Fernandez some credit also behind the plate. I mean, this Russ team had only been thrown out 37 times all year leading into this tournament. He's thrown them out twice in one game. And they're not going to stop running, I don't think. No. The, despite being caught, mm -hmm. cut down twice in this game already. Uh, they'll stay aggressive. Stapleton can run as well over at first. I expect him to take off at some point. Barry and Files went away. One ball in a strike. Stapleton leads at first base. The throw over. He just got back under the tag. Yeah, good pick move there from Martinez. It's one of his better moves as well. Trying to mix up his looks a little bit. Hold a little bit longer one time. Go a little bit quicker the next time. And that's the game within the game. You can help out your catcher a little bit by holding those runners well over at first base. You get a slot step the last pitch. Now a little bit of higher leg kick as Berrigan swings and misses for strike two. No score here. Bottom of the third inning. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swinging a high fly ball. Shallow left field. Under it is Alexander. He makes the catch and the inning is over. One runner left on base. We go into the top half of the fourth inning. It's no score between Payne College and Russ College here this afternoon. The 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back here for the top of the fourth inning. No score between Payne College and Russ College. Three hits between the two teams as Dominique Page leads it off for Payne College. Devin Talenton on for his fourth inning of work for Russ College. He's been involved in a high wire act the first three innings, getting into trouble and getting out of it to keep the game scoreless. One ball and a strike. A swing and a foul. One ball and two strikes now. The one-two pitch. Swing and a high fly ball to center field. Barrington's there. He makes the catch. One away. One away for Jarrell Malone. Hey, 
And he takes a ball low. And once again, Tonington falls behind in the count. Two balls and no strikes. He spiked the third pitch. Just has not all day been consistent with his release point. Being in the strike zone, he's fallen behind quite a bit this afternoon to pain hitters. Working from the windup is Tallington. The kick and the pitch on three and nothing. And he gets one in there for a strike. As Malone thought that was ball four, he was headed to first base. Three balls and a strike, the pitch. Swinging a ground ball to shortstop. Warren Fields shuffles, throws across for the out. Two away. A yeah, really good play right there by him. That ball kind of kicked up very late, and you'll see it right here on the replay. Kind of waited on it a little bit, but did a good job of getting around the baseball. But right there, that last little kick up does a good job of getting both his hands. That's also why it's important to put that off hand, your throwing hand, up on top of your glove. I see a lot of guys nowadays when I'm doing travel ball and stuff like that with younger guys, they love to only put that glove down there yeah. and not put that cover hand. Having that cover hand is very important, and that right there it popped up, hit off that hand, went into the glove able to shuffle and make it easy to throw over to first to get out number two. And also helped that Barron had his body in front of the ball, too. Yeah, wasn't trying to field it to the side yeah. or anything like that. Did a great job of rounding the baseball, getting his body in front of it, and able to make an easy play. Two outs now for Jerry Beto. He's up in the count, two balls and no strikes. Now it's three balls and no strikes. And Talented comes back with a strike to make the count three balls and one strike. And that's ball four. So the second walk of the inning by Tallington. It's a two-out walk. That'll bring up Carmelo Martinez. And, you know, for Tallington, I mean, chance to get a one, two, three inning, kind of keep that pitch count down, feel good about yourself, and now you put another base runner on base freely. And that normally comes back to hurt. But for him, it hasn't, though. Yeah. He, he, he walked batters. He, he, he threw a wild pitch earlier. Um, but Payne hasn't been able to take advantage of it. That pitch misses just signs. It's like he's aiming his breaking pitches. Not really throwing him with a lot of confidence. Runner on at first base, two outs. No score in the... Top of the fourth inning. And the runner goes. Time to steps off. Throws the second base. The throw skips and hits Warren. The ball gets away, but no further advancement by the runner. On the stolen base where Townington did not realize the runner was actually going on the before he delivered the ball. And the shortstop and second baseman both collided, and Warren actually fell on top of the runner. Yeah, nothing you could do there. I saw Coach Marshall kind of asking if they would get third because he fell on top of him. But when you're trying to make a play on the ball, it's not really interfering. So just a awkward play there. But a nice job to take off early and probably could have called a ball. I'm not sure if he stepped off the back of the rubber or not. He seemed like he just turned and just mm -hmm. th threw the ball to second base. Yeah. And that pitch misses just three there balls in one strike. Again. Yeah, yeah, he did. Maybe he did step off the back. Not a great throw to second, though. I'm not sure he would have gotten him with a good throw anyways. <laughs> three balls in a strike, and that's ball four. The second straight walk now by Townington. And 
Now puts, another mound visit. Yeah, puts runners on first and second base with two outs now in the inning. Well, coach thought about it, went back to the dugout, and then said, no, nah, we're going to go ahead and just do a visit. So, Still nobody up in the bullpen this inning. Surprise. They don't have anybody up. Yeah, with the way Tyler has been struggling with some control, mm -hmm. you think there would be action a little bit earlier in the inning. But he Even did with get getting the, the first two outs kind of easily, well, man, it looks like we're going to make a move. So that's going to be it for Tarrington. He's only able he's only able to last three and two-thirds of an inning in this one. So we are going to get our truest call to the bullpen as Brighton Sampson is going to come into the ball game. We saw him yesterday. He's got a really good arm, good frame as well. Ball kind of jumps out of his hand, and they're going to need him to come in and throw about the way that he did yesterday, trying to keep this Payne College team off the board. For Tallington, that's a weird start. You don't give up any runs. You, you know, you've kept your team in the ball game, but it's obviously not going to be one that he's super proud of as well when he looks at the walks and some of the traffic that he had throughout his three and two-thirds innings. Yeah, he definitely had to battle through his start today. From the early going, he never seemed comfortable, never could get in the rhythm. Despite being able to work out of trouble, he kept constantly getting into trouble. And you thought with the first two men he faced in this inning being retired so quickly that he might have hit a point where he was going to start to be more consistent, but that didn't happen. He walked the last two batters he faced, and the bullprint's on now for Russ College. Been some perfect weather here at Riverwalk Stadium. We've talked about that, but it's been great for fans. Well, we've talked about if you're out there and you're close to the Montgomery area and you're tuning in, find a way to get here to the ballpark tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun with everything going on. Festivities starting from 1 to 5. There'll be a home run derby out here on the field. And then you'll have your championship game between the winners of our two games coming on later on tonight. And we will crown our 2023 Black College World Series champion. And Edwards Water kept themselves alive, trying to get back to back. The big win, Samson misses with his first pitch. Ray Alexander, the batter for Payne College. Good chance to drive in the first run of the game for either team. Samson the kick and the pitch. Fires a strike. One ball and a strike to count. Samson fires again for strike two. So Samson one pitch away from getting out of the inning. First and second for Payne. The pitch by Sampson. Swing and a miss, strike three. And the inning is over. Payne leaves two runners aboard, unable to score again. We go into the bottom half of the fourth inning. It's still no score between Payne College and Russ College at the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson.
We're back here for the bottom of the fourth inning. No score between Payne College and Russ College. A lot of action on the bases, stolen bases, but yet no runs to score this. Emmanuel Martinez on for his fourth inning of work. He's ahead in the count, no balls and a strike. He faces Khalil Robinson, leads off the inning. Robinson takes way outside, one and one to count. The 1-1 one, one nearly hit Robinson. He had to duck out of the way on that one. Two balls and a strike. Emmanuel Martinez from the windup. And the pitch. Just off the inside corner. Three and one to count. The 3-1 pitch. Misses up and in and a leadoff walk to start the bottom of the fourth for Rust. And the walk will bring up Stone Teague. Teague is 0 for 1 today. Squares the bunt and bunches five down the first baseline. Rush College, a team that will steal bases. They'll bunt to try to move runners over. It's worked well for them in this tournament so far. Being able to score runs, playing small ball instead of relying on traditional hits or extra base hits. Robinson leads at first base. Martinez from the stretch. Teague squares the bunt again, but this time takes the pitch for a ball low. The third baseman Martinez playing in, looking for the bunt as Teague squares again, takes outside for a ball. The outfield, outfield playing straight up and shallow all the way around. Infield is the second baseman, the shortstop playing for a double play. Teague did not show bunt that time and takes a pitch upstairs. The count is three balls and one strike now. Martinez sets and delivers. Outside, he walked him. So back-to-back -back walks to start the fourth inning for Rust. Yeah, not what Payne College was looking for from Emmanuel Martinez at all. But he's been able to work out of trouble so far through the first three innings. He's got to do it again here in the fourth. Yeah, just hadn't done himself any favors. Now four walks here through the first three-plus innings. For Emmanuel Martinez. Jalen Thomas now the batter. It's with runners in scoring position. The corners are in first and third. Anticipating a bunt. And Thomas gets one down to third. Ball fielded by Martinez to throw over the first in time to get him. So the runners advance from second to third with one out. Yeah, but right there we saw that speed that we've been talking about from Jalen Thomas. You don't see many catchers that can get down the line the way that he can. He made that place. That play a lot closer than most catchers would be able to make that play on a bunt. Great execution, though, there by Jalen Thomas. 
So now a big opportunity here for Deshaun Franks to give Rust the lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The infield is in for Payne College all the way around. Trying to cut that runner off at third base. Pitch misses high. In the game that's been scrolling so far, you think maybe one run might win this. The 1-0 pitch. Swing and a foul back behind home plate. Russ College was the GCAC regular season champions, but they lost in the championship round of their conference tournament to Dillard University, a, a program that just started this year. But they were slated the number one seed in the NAIA bracket of this Black College World Series. Runners on second and third base with one out. Emmanuel Martinez from the stretch. Long look in the kick in the pitch. A fastball misses just outside for ball two. Teague is on at second base. Robinson on at third. Here's the pitch. It misses three balls in the strike. Martinez in danger of walking the bases loaded. Swing and a miss. Yeah, not a bad hack there, though, from Deshaun Franks. I mean, you're up in the count 3-1. You better be sitting fastball, and he got it right there. Just wasn't able to get the barrel to it. If Frank reaches, Victor Clay will bat next for Rust. Swinging a tapper to Martinez. He feels and spikes the ball, throws it away down the right field line. Two runs are going to score. And Franks is going to go all the way to third base. The first big mistake of the game, and it happened to Payne College. And Russ College takes advantage. They score two runs on the throwing air by the pitcher Martinez. Well, that's twice for Franks now that he's been able to reach on an error. First time was by the third baseman, and this time by the pitcher. And right there, Martinez, he was doing the right thing, turning to check to third. And had he checked a little bit more, he would have probably realized, hey, I can make a throw to third and possibly get Robinson in a rundown or get him trying to get back to third. He had come way off the bag, but then turns and tries to rush himself a little bit, throwing it to first, spikes it in the ground, and a big-time error could lead to more runs here for and Cruz bunts foul you've seen time and time again in this tournament pitchers being unable to field and throw the ball mm -hmm. has really made a difference and that time Emmanuel Martinez had the runner out at first base but short hopped the first base of Malone and the ball ended up down the right field line to score two runs Cruz bats with the run on third and one out. Snap throw back to third base. And the runner, Franks, just gets back ahead of the tag. Yeah, I think he injured himself diving back into third as well. You see him throw off that hand mitt. Yes, the third baseman, Martinez, as he attempted to make Ooh. the tag, stepped on Franks' hand. That never feels good. Franks is all right. 
takes his lead from third base. We've gotten to see uh, Alejandro Fernandez show off his arm a few times today. He throws it really well from behind the plate. He likes to throw it infield way in now. And there's the bunt. It's a squeeze play. Fielded by Emmanuel Martinez. A flip to the plate. Not in time to get Franks. And another run scores. It's three to nothing, Russ College. Yeah, and right there, um, I mean, it almost seemed like some indecisiveness from Martinez on what he wanted to do if he wanted to go overhand or underhanded. And then finally went underhanded. And great slide right there by Deshaun Franks to get his hand in there. That's what we talked about. This Russ College team, they're going to score runs. And normally when they score, they score them in bunches. And they've now put up three here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And going back to that play, you said Martinez was a little bit indecisive with how he wanted to throw the ball to catch it. He threw a looping underhand toss. Yeah. Now, if you are going to go underhanded, it better be one of those firm underhand tosses. And right there, just you can't have a loop in it the way he did. And DeMar drives one into right field. It'll be caught by Page for the second out of the inning. That ball just hung in the air way too long. You'll see it right here. Bunt goes right back to the pitcher. And then you see it right here on the toss. See way too much air time right there. It's got to be one of those where you're really getting some on it. You know, you see shortstops and second basemen do that. They go underhand, but it's a firm toss. Right there, just way too much loopiness on the ball, and that allowed the runner to get in. Good job to settle in and get out number two, though. And now you have bottom of the lineup coming up. Yeah, Warren, the batter now for Russ College. And that pitch hit Warren. Too many free bases here in this inning from Emmanuel Martinez, and that's now twice that he has put the nine-hole hitter on without him having to do anything to earn it. A walk his first time, now a hit by pitch his second time. That sets it up for the top of the lineup, Shamar Stapleton. We've already seen him hit a double in the right center gap off of Martinez. And, you know, you got to feel that Coach Kirby Marshall's in a very tough spot for Payne College. Not a very deep team. We've talked about that with their roster. Um, so I don't know how many more pitching options that they really have. We really hadn't seen anybody get up in the bullpen or do much. Uh, we figured that Hunter Justice is probably done for this tournament after throwing about 130, 140 pitches on Wednesday night. So it's just going to be interesting to see kind of what they decide and puts Martinez in a tough spot as well as he kind of knows that even if he has an inning where he struggles like this, probably not coming out of the ball game. Yeah, the Payne College very, has very limited options for their bullpen. I mean, like, despite the fact that Martinez has been inconsistent in this start so far, hadn't seen anybody warm up in the bullpen, unlike Russ College who had guys working from the first inning on. Well, and then, like we said, I mean, only 16 on the roster. And then you got, you know, Justice that threw two days ago. Um, I can't remember who they had that threw yesterday, but they probably burnt themselves as well. And so you really only have 14 guys that yeah. you can pitch, and you got, you know, nine others that are already in the lineup. And so it's just going to make it difficult for them the later they get into this ball game. Here's only some one hit on the game for Rust, but three runs. And shows you the importance of not giving up those free passes and also making plays, not making errors. Two errors as well for Payne College. Yeah, the, the big one by Martinez himself, throwing the ball away on a bunt that ended up with two runs scoring. Here's Stapleton now. The hit he takes inside for ball two. The winner of this game will play Florida Memorial in the NAIA final for the right to go to the Black Cubs World Series Championship game that will be played tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. here in Montgomery at Riverwalk Ballpark. Two balls and one strike to Stapleton. Two away, three runs in in the inning for Rust. Swing and a miss. 
Well, and I'm sure that was part of the conversation is, you know, hey, look, Emmanuel, when you're throwing strikes, they're, they're, they hadn't barreled it up. They hadn't hit you today, but you're just – we're giving them way too much stuff, and that's exactly what's happened. Payne has given Rust everything that they've gotten getting on base and scoring runs. I mean, one hit in the game, and it's the first batter of the and game. And that's going to be a up. wild pitch. Runners move up 90 feet each. So, once again, Martinez not helping himself out with – keeping the ball in the strike zone. Yeah, just really can't consistently find that release point. Another 3-2 count as well. And when the pitcher is struggling with some control, it affects the defense. They're not ready to make plays. They're on their heels for the most part. And we've seen that play it out. Payne with two errors already in the game. There's a drive to center field. And that ball is going to get down and go all the way near the warning track. Two more runs are going to score. It's going to be a two-run triple by Shamar Stapleton to make it five to nothing, Russ College. The story of the tournament has been the team that has the big inning normally wins and, and in this game in this inning Russ has played at five runs so far and lead five to nothing you can kind of tell that pain they're just in a tough spot with what to do right now I mean nobody up in the bullpen I'm sure that was part of the conversation with Martinez also is look well, we ain't got many other options so you better find a way to stay out here and eat up a few more innings and a few more pitches for us but a snap throw to third, and they get him. I'm telling you, Fernandez can throw it from behind the plate. That is three runners that he has now thrown out here in this ball game. He's thrown out two at second, and, and Stapleton at third base. And was and very close to getting Franks at yes, third earlier. Yeah, he was out by a mile. Great throw, and that's not what you want. I mean, you never want to make the last out at third base, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're going into third or going back to third. You don't want to make that last out when you're 90 feet away, and Big play right there by Fernandez to really help out his pitcher and get them out of the inning. Because, I mean, Russ put five runs on the board, two aided with the help of a throwing error by Emmanuel Martinez, and they lead this one five to nothing as we head into the top half of the fifth inning at the 2023 Black Colors World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back for the top of the fifth inning with Russ College leading five to nothing. They scored five runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Um, two runs aided by a throwing error by Payne College pitcher Emmanuel Martinez. A lot of small ball was played in that inning by Russ, by Russ College. Bunch, stolen bases. But it was the walks, foul pitches that they really did in Emmanuel Martinez in that last half inning. Bryanton Sampson on in relief for his second inning of work. It's 
two balls and a strike to Denny Dyson, the shortstop. Dyson with a line drive in the center field for a base hit. Yeah, and I think right there, you know, you have a five-run lead. And so it just kind of seemed like Malik Barry him. Well, I'm not going to risk anything, let this ball yeah. get by me and allow them to have a big game. We'll keep it in front and see if we can try to get a double play or just work around this leadoff single. And probably a small play out there in center field. Had he kept coming in, he would have had a shot to make a diving play, but you're also having a big risk. I mean, nobody behind you. It's deep out there in center field. And you got some speed out there as well for Payne College. Could have been an inside-the-park home run if that ball gets by him. You don't want to risk giving up extra bases on the on the ball that you could just play for a single. The Sampson misses high for ball two. Joshua Cruz, the batter for Payne College. As Thomas goes out to try to chat with his pitcher to try to calm him down. But the big five-run league, you do not want to walk people. You want to keep the game going, throw strikes, put the ball in play, put the defense work for you. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. Samson fires again, swing and a miss, strike two. After the mound visit by Thomas, the second of strikes thrown by Samson. Isn't it crazy how just somebody coming out there and just calming you down a little bit can really change things for you as a pitcher? Yeah, try to get you back in the center, try to get you back in the zone, probably reminding him, hey, like we got a big lead, throw the ball in there, let him hit it. The 2-2 pitch. Swing it and miss strike three. That was a great changeup. Great changeup. That's what you want. You know, If you're righty and you want to get left-handed hitters out, you better have a changeup. You better have something that tails away from them. Lefties love it low and in. But if you can give them something that looks like it's coming in that part that they love it at and then have it fade away, I mean, that's a perfect changeup right there. And that's sometimes the batter got to tip your cap. I mean, that, it looked like a fastball coming out of his hands and – Great job right there to come back and get the strike out there by Brighton Sampson. One away for Alejandro Fernandez. He takes a strike. One ball and a strike. Yeah, Fernandez has been really, really impressive behind the plate for Payne College through the first three days. And he's called a really good games. He's thrown the ball well. Done really well blocking pitches in the dirt. He's one of the big reasons why Payne College is in this round. Yeah. Jalen Thomas as well has done a great job behind the plate for Rust. And pitch misses inside, three balls and a strike. The big thing for a pitcher is when your offense gives you a five-run lead to come out in the next half inning and get that shutdown inning. And that's high for ball four. So two are on and one out for Payne College. That's been the story of this ball game. Walks from both sides. Here's Raul Guerrero, the 6'3 outfielder from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, with a chance to Try to drive in the first run of the game for Payne College. And he takes way upstairs for a ball. <laughs> Vladimir Lemos is going to be the pitch runner at second base for Payne. And that's and down at him. If you're used to watching Division I baseball, Major League Baseball, they, they don't have speed-up runners. But in high school, you have speed-up runners for the pitcher and catcher and uh, NAIA, if they agree to it at the home plate meeting, you can have speed-up runners. So that's what you're seeing with Lemos coming in for 
Fernandez will get to check back in and continue catching, but they allow him to go in and kind of get a rest real quick, get his gear on. That way you're not waiting too much in between innings. Right. We also saw some confusion with that the other day. They didn't talk it over before the game. Somebody tried to put a speed-up runner in. They had to take him out, put the catcher back in. and so It's all about that home plate meeting and making sure that both sides, if you want to do it, you got to bring it up and say, Coach, you know, you mind if we do speed-up runners in this game? And normally they'll agree to it and be able to go with it. Especially if it works for both sides. Now, if you got a team not full of speedsters, maybe one coach will say, I don't think I want yeah. to agree to that. <laughs> I ain't got many guys I can put in. That pitch misses upstairs. Three balls and two strikes to count. And Samson really struggling with his command and starting to see some activity picking up down there. And, you know, for Samson, he threw yesterday as well. So maybe starting to see some arm fatigue also after throwing a couple innings yesterday. Three balls and two strikes, and that's inside for ball four. And the bases are now loaded for Payne College. Craig Randolph is the one getting warmed up down in that bullpen. And John Bates going to head to the mound to talk to Sampson while the bullpen gets to work. The story of this game so far has been walks in Russ College in the fourth inning was able to take advantage of those walks. Let's see what Payne College can do with the bases loaded, helped by three walks in the inning. But and you also got, I mean, the message has to be right here, look, as bad as this has been so far, if you can just get yourself a ground ball, we can get out of this. Payne was able to do it in their first inning. Or, excuse me, it was actually Russ that was able to do it. It was Tallington that was able to get the ground ball after the leadoff walks to start the ball game. After 1-6-3 double play, was able to get out of it with no runs. And so it's probably what you kind of go up there and tell Samson here is, look, just find a way to get us a ground ball. we got a chance. Yeah. Dominic Page is going to bat with the bases loaded and one out with a chance to get Payne College on the board. Sampson fires a strike. The first baseman and third baseman are playing in on the grass. The infielders up the middle, second base, and shortstop playing for double play. There's a drive. In the left center field, it's going to go over the head of the center fielder and go all the way to the wall. Three runs are going to score on the double. It's now five to three, Rust. Great piece of hitting right there. He knew that he was probably getting a fastball with the way that Sampson has been struggling to find the zone. He was all over it. Hit it into the deepest part of the ballpark, but able to get it over the center fielder's head. That's what makes it tough. A lot of these teams are not used to having as much outfield space as we have here at Riverwalk Stadium, and so it makes it kind of awkward for you as an outfielder. Of where do you want to stand? Where do you want to position yourself? And now Sampson with a hit by pitch. Yeah, this inning has just unraveled for Sampson. Gave up the hit to start the inning, then he compounded it with walks to load the bases before the big three-run double by Dominic Page to cut what was a 5 nothing deficit to 5-3. to three. Allen Evans now getting warmed up as well. He threw yesterday for this Rust College team. Big answer here from Payne, though. You get down 5-0. to zero. And then a great job to come back and now find a way to at least scratch across three and a chance for some more. Here's Beto to try to add another run or two maybe. He takes inside for a ball. And you would have to think this is going to be Samson's last batter, regardless of the outcome of this one, with the bullpen working for Russ College. I'm just not a big fan at all of having the bullpens on a field. You run into issues like that where the ball gets down behind home plate. You got to have a protector protecting the guys in the bullpen. It's a pretty old school look to a ballpark. In, in most modern day ballparks now, the bullpens are beyond the outfield wall or they are outside of the side wall down either one of the lines. It's where now you see the actual bullpen in, in the field of play. 
as Sampson fires in a strike. Two balls and one strike. Runners on second and third for Payne College. They're threatening again. And that pitch hits Beto and the bases are loaded again. Xavier Campbell is walking down there as well now, and he's thrown the last two days. So this would be three straight days for Campbell. And Bates is out to the mound again, and that's going to be it for Sampson. We kind of thought that that might have been his last batter, and with the hit batsman, it definitely will be. So the third pitcher of the afternoon will come aboard for Russ College. Looks like it'll be Allen Evans getting the truest Call to the bullpen. Allen Evans through yesterday as well. So it will be interesting to see how he bounces back. You know, Sampson came in and looked really good when he first came out of the pen. But, you know, when you threw yesterday already and then you've thrown some in the pen, you throw and then you go sit down and have a long inning the way that they did, uh, just doesn't seem like that his arm was able to bounce back as well from that. Really tough inning right here for Sampson. And a chance now for Payne College. One swing of the bat could tie this thing up or give him the lead. Yeah, it looked pretty dire at the start of the inning after giving up five runs at the bottom of the fourth. But they've been able to rally here to score three and now threatening to get more. This is why pitching and defense so important in baseball. Only six total hits in the ball game, but you have eight runs scored just due to the fact there's been a lot of walks, hit by pitches, errors, things that have allowed guys to get on base without really having to earn it. Yeah, especially when a rush college you have a five-run lead, the, the worst thing you want to do if you're a pitcher is, is put men on base who don't earn their way on with hits. We've seen walks in this inning. We've seen... A hit batter in the inning, and it's allowed Payne College to, to fight their way back into this one. Once again, the winner of this game will play Florida Memorial in the NAIA championship round of this tournament for the right to place tomorrow in the Black Cubs World Series championship game. Camilo Martinez steps in for Payne College with the bases loaded and one away, three runs already in in the inning on the big three-run double by Page. First pitch strike from Allen Evans. Wing and a miss, strike two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Evans gets Martinez on three pitches. Just two outs now for Ray Alexander. Evans has thrown four consecutive strikes. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what you want coming out of the bullpen. Throw strikes. Especially when all these guys on base are due to the fact that you didn't throw strikes. And outside of one who had the big three RBI triple. Three RBI double, excuse me. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Swinging as a line drive to right field. That's going to be... In and out of the glove of the right fielder, Stapleton. Two runs are going to score, and the game is tied at five. Shamar Stapleton 
tried to make a what would have been a spectacular catch on a sinking line drive to right field. It popped out of his glove as he hit the ground and allowed two runs to score. And this ball game is even at five. That was great effort out there by Stapleton. You know, I've been watching where he's standing, and it, and it feels like he's been playing really deep out there in right field, especially considering a lot of right-handed hitters in the lineup. And you see he's kind of back out in that deep section of the outfield. The runners go from first base. It wouldn't have mattered if that was a good pitch or not. They had no chance to get him a great jump. Now they're going to steal second base. They put runners on second and third now with two outs. Five runs already in for Payne College to tie the game. Another hit here. Can give them the lead. Who would have thought that going into the inning? Really kind of looked like that Rust was starting to take control of this ball game. And got to be able to come out and throw strikes with the lead. Yes, the walks have played both teams in this one. It was led to both big innings. The five runs that Russ scored in the bottom of the fourth and the five runs here that Payne College has scored. Denny Diaz looking to give Payne the lead. And he tops one to third. DeMar backs up, feels it, throws across for the final out of the inning, but not before. Five runs score in the inning for Payne College to tie this one up. We go into the bottom of the fifth inning, tied at five in the 2023 Black Cause World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. We're back for the bottom of the fifth in a brand new ball game tied at five. Five runs scored by Payne in the top of the fifth inning. The answer, Russ College scored five runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Emmanuel Martinez back on the bump for Payne College. Swing and a miss by Berrien. No balls and two strikes to the Russ College center fielder. Barry and files it away. Some of the first three and a half innings, there were a lot of base runners and, and nobody scored. <laughs> in, in the last yeah. two half innings, there have been 10 runs scored. And it all evens out. You continue to put base runners on base, eventually they're going to end up coming across. I don't know that I've ever seen a game where teams just constantly have base runners and sitting there two to one at the end. <laughs> Eventually, those base runners are going to find a way to come across the plate. And it happened in bunches in the last two innings. One ball and two strikes to Berrien. 
He gets a high fly ball carrying to left center field. Beto's there to make the catch. One away. Yeah, ball's just not carrying to that part of the field like it was yesterday. Wind's kind of blowing in more today than it was yesterday. It was blowing out towards that scoreboard. Today, you can it's either not blowing or at times that flag has been, you know, barely blowing in from right field. So, there's not a lot of carry to the ball in that direction like there was yesterday. Despite the fact there were has been some home runs hit today in the previous game, but not in this one. Here's Khalil Robinson, the batter now for Rust. He takes a ball high. You mentioned Payne College. Not a lot of depth on their roster, so despite the fact that Russell scored five runs. Emmanuel Martinez is still out there. Two balls and no strikes to Khalil Robinson. The pitch. Swinging a foul at the plates. Rust has used three pitches already in this game. Payne College still on the starter, Emmanuel Luke Martinez. That's way outside for a ball. Three balls and a strike. Stone Teague waits on deck for Russ College. The 3 1 pitch. Swinging a foul back. Balls and two strikes to Khalil Robinson. And he takes outside a walk, a leadoff walk to start the inning for Russ College. They will bring up Stone T. It's one of those close pitches there, and you see Fernandez kind of having a conversation with the home plate umpire. Yes, Payne Fern wanted that one. Yes, Fernandez hasn't been happy with the strike zone of the home plate umpire in today's game. T takes inside for ball one. You've seen Fernandez, after receiving the pitch, hold it in the area where he caught the ball to give the umpire a really good look at it to say, hey, you, you missed that one. Teague fouls it away, one ball and a strike. And he just missed that one. That was right where lefties like it. That low and inside part of the zone where they can just kind of drop that bat head down on it. He's got a good looking swing from the left side. That pitch by Martinez misses outside. Two balls and a strike. In this count, you do figure there will be action on the bases. This Russ College team likes to steal. They've ran in this ball game. We're caught stealing twice, though, but they're still going to run at some point. That pitch misses outside. Three balls in the strike. Three balls and a strike. Martinez from the stretch. Long calls, now delivers. In the dirt, ball four. So back-to-back -back walks. Two on for the catcher, Jalen Thomas.
Thomas. Not Bunning, takes low. Ball one. No action in the bullpen for Payne College. This is a game for Martinez right now. And he fires a ball low. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, we've seen nobody head down to the bullpen for Payne, so. And they may be in a situation where if they throw somebody in this game, they may have nobody for later on the night. That's you know, right. We talked about it's not a very deep roster. And I'm sure they've probably had to take a few guys who didn't come to them as pitchers and try to turn them into pitchers for certain situations. Two balls and no strikes to Thomas. The pitch. Swinging a drive to center field. Is going to hang up for Beto, who makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Can't do much more with that pitch. Thomas squared it up, just hit it right to the center fielder. Tough luck at the plate. If they continue playing, though, I'm sure he'll have one where he dinks one in front of the outfield, in between the outfield and infield, or rolls one to somebody and gets on base. I mean, it, it all evens out in the end. Those are frustrating, though, when you actually square it up and hit it well and have nothing to show for it. Here's Deshaun Franks now, the last hope for the inning for Russ College. Five five here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Tom Franks takes a strike. After Perel walks, Martinez one pitch away from getting out of it potentially. The pitch fouled away. No balls and two strikes now. Runners on first and second for Russ College. Martinez, long look in, the kick and the pitch. Swinging the ground ball to the right side and through in the right field for a base hit. Coming around is Robinson. The throw to the plate is not in time from the right fielder. And Russ College regains the lead on the run scoring hit by Deshaun Franks. And, you know, right there, you would like for Victor Cruz, the on-deck batter, to go and get behind home plate and kind of let Robinson know if he needed to get down or not. It was a great job by Fernandez, the catcher. He just kind of casually acted like the ball wasn't coming in, and the next thing you know, kind of gets ready to make a catch and a tag. We saw Pudge Rodriguez do that, Yadier Molina do things like that, and it's just little games, little things you can figure out as a catcher back there. He's been impressive behind the plate, and that almost stolen out. Right there, if Robinson wouldn't have been able to get that foot in just in time. It was a good strong throw by Page, the right fielder, too. Yeah, we've seen him show off his arm a couple of times. And he may be a guy that they could bring in, throw off the mound with the arm strength that we've seen from him so far in this tournament. Here's Cruz. He takes high for ball two. So Russ has broken the 5-5 five, five tie with the run here in the inning on the run scoring hit by Franks. Yeah, I don't think that we're done seeing runs scored here in this ball game on either side. Yeah, after not getting in the first three innings, we've gotten 11 since the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, and this is what we talked about the other day, too. You know, early in this tournament, you're going to see a lot of teams' best pitchers. They're trying to win games, set themselves up to – be in the winner's bracket and not fall in the loser's bracket after play an extra game like these guys are. And so you're going to see the better arms as we get later on into the tournament. And now we got some movement in the Payne College bullpen. Is yeah. a reliever heading down there, Fabio Wharf. Yeah, he was starting to stretch and kind of get loose in the dugout. I was wondering if he would be a candidate to come on the mound as you get a walk here to Victor Cruz with two outs. And that would bring up DeMar to bat with the bases loaded. 
you got Worf listed as a first baseman. So, I mean, that also kind of tells you what we were talking about where they just don't have a ton of depth on the mound. And so they're trying to get Martinez to give him as much as he can. Now we get a little bit of a visit from Fernandez. He saw the bullpen getting going down there, trying to give them some time to get going. Let Worf get his arm in shape. Yeah, this is a critical moment in the ball game right here. Um, I don't know about. I mean, you, you got a great bat up right here in Jalik Demar. Uh, he swung it well throughout this contest. He's got a good looking swing, and you know, as we saw in the top of this inning, a base clearing double got three runs. He is capable of putting one in the gaps and causing some issues. And Victor Cruz easily has the speed to score from first base on a ball that gets to the outfield. Yeah, both teams with really exceptional base runners in terms of speed, so any ball in the gap would definitely score multiple runs in this situation for Russ College. So Emmanuel Martinez peers in against DeMar, and DeMar swings the first pitch and fouls it off to the right. And, you know, normally you tell hitters, Hey, if you see a meeting at the mound, whether it's from the catcher or from the coach, you're probably getting a fastball. And so be ready to hit the fastball. And it seemed like he was there just a little late on it. Founds it off over the first base side. DeMar fouls it away again. Also encouraging for pain that Martinez, after the meeting, has come in and thrown two strikes. He struggled with his control throughout this one, but – um. These last two pitches able to stay in the zone. Let's go, job. Let's go, job. Let's go, job. No balls and two strikes. Base is loaded. The pitch. And it gets away from the catcher to the backstop, and another one is going to score. It's now 7 to 5, Russ College. Fernandez might have. Had that ball hit off the heel of his glove and it went to the backstop. Yeah, really the first mistake that we've seen from Fernandez today. He has caught really well, thrown the ball really well from behind the plate, but as we were talking about with Thomas as well, three straight days of catching, probably starting to get a little tired. The sun is starting to come out here, so starting to get a little bit hotter, that humidity picking up, and you lose your focus, and I think that's exactly what happened there with Fernandez. And plus a lot of long innings, too. Mm -hmm. But Coach DePriberteria has no excuse to miss the ball like that. Yeah, any coach tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> the pitch. Over but low. And the count is full of three and two. Yeah, there's been a couple of tough, close calls for Emmanuel Martinez throughout this ball game today as well. Three balls and two strikes to DeMar. The pitch. He walked him. Bases loaded again for Russ College. Yeah, so really the wild pitch, or excuse me, the pass ball there for, for Fernandez. And it'll still bother him, but Run would have scored anyways on the walk. So another walk, though, for Martinez. I think that's now seven on the ball game for him. Yeah, seven walks in the ball game for him. As Fabio Wharf continues to warm up in the bullpen for Payne College. Demarium Warren now the batter for Rust. Yeah, kind of surprised to see him show bunt, but you do have the third baseman playing back and first baseman playing back, so it's going to be up to the pitcher to field any kind of bunt. He takes outside one and one to count. Didn't show it there, but it wouldn't shock me to see him try to lay one down again now after not showing it on the second pitch. There's a ground ball to second base, fitted by Cruz. Throw the first, and that's the inning. But Russ College gets two to take a 7-5 lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning as we head to the sixth inning at the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. 
because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back for the top of the sixth inning, Russ College has regained the lead. They lead it 7-5 over Payne College with two runs in the bottom of the fifth inning. Olin Evans back for a second inning of work in relief of Bryington Sampson. He fires. Brown ball foul pass first. Gosher recruits the leadoff batter in the inning for Payne College. Ground ball to second base. Play fields it and throws him out. One away for Fernandez. Breaking ball misses high. If you're Russ College, you want a lot of quick outs here. And Colin Evans has come in and thrown strikes right away. There's a ground ball to shortstop. Fielded by Warren, who throws across for the out. Yeah, Warren has played some really good shortstop throughout this tournament for Rust. And very smooth. See right here, he does kind of feel that one to the side, but he gets around it to kind of get his body set to start having that momentum to first to have a good strong throw. And if that's something that you practice a good bit, then you can do it pretty easily in a game. And he looks like a guy that really takes his craft at shortstop very seriously and has been very smooth there from that position so far throughout this tournament. Yeah, no errors in the ball game for Russ College. Two by Payne so far. Up next is Raul Guerrero. Swing and a miss on the off-speed pitch. Olin Evans has done just the job you want out of the bullpen. Coming in, throw strikes, and get quick outs. And he strikes out Guerrero to end the inning. A quick one, two, three frame thrown by Evans. We go into the bottom of the sixth inning with Russ College leading Payne College 7-5 at the 2023 Black Cuz World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. 
because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. We're back for the bottom half of the sixth inning with Russ College leading Payne College 7-5. Jamar Stapleton to lead it off in the inning for Russ. He was a big part of that five-run bottom of the fourth inning that enabled Russ to jump out to a 5 nothing lead. Yeah, I mean, he's been a big part of this ballgame offensively, period, for them. Uh, double to start the ball game, walk, and then he had the RBI triple, the two RBI triple. So he has had a good game. That's what you want out of your leadoff guy. Get on base, knock in some runs, and put some pressure on the defense. There's a fly ball hit the center field. There to make the catch is Beto, first out of the inning. Fabio Wharf is now on for Payne College in relief of Emmanuel Martinez, who went as far as he could. Yeah. He, he went five innings. He gave up five runs. Three of them were earned. Seven walks, though, did him in. Um, but you could tell, like, Payne College was just reluctant to go to that bullpen. Being with a short staff as a ground ball to third. Fit about Martinez, yeah. who throws out the runner. But the difference is, Worf's coming in throwing strikes. Yeah, that's you what know, you want to do, yeah. You can watch him and tell, like, he's – I don't mean this disrespectfully. He's not a pitcher. I mean, he's listed as a first baseman, but he's just coming in and easily throwing the ball over the plate and saying, here, if y'all can hit it, hit it. But – Hitting's already hard enough, so if you can just come in and throw some strikes, you can get some outs. You see it. You know, we see it in Major League Baseball all the time. How many position players do we see come in and they're throwing 75 miles an hour easy in there, but since they're throwing strikes, they're changing speeds, they get outs. And that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it really helps them. Like, you, there's, there's no pressure. Mm -hmm. They don't expect you as a position player trying to pitch to no Big Nolan Ryan or anything like that. Just get the ball with the plate. Don't walk anybody and give your defense opportunity to work. Exactly. Khalil Robinson was way out in front of that one. He yanked that ball a long way out here outside the stadium. No balls and two strikes to Robinson. The pitch. Followed away again. We've seen Olin Evans come in the ball game for Russ College and throw strikes immediately. And we've seen the same thing from Fabio Worth. So yeah. these last two relievers have really done a job of getting in the strike zone. And it's resulted in quick outs for both sides as well. That pitch misses high. One and two. Not a terrible 0-2 pitch, though, there after Robinson had kind of been free swinging on the last three pitches. 
Strike three called. Another quick inning. We go into the top half of the seventh inning with Russ College leading Payne College 7-5 at the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson Foods. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back for the top half of the seventh inning. It's 7-5, Russ College over Payne College. Olin Evans on for his third inning of work. Has not surrendered a run. Yeah, Olin Evans just come in and fired strikes. Starts out this at bat with a strike. That's what you saw Wharf do as well for Payne College. Throw strikes. And they've been able to get some outs here coming out of the bullpen. He fires a ground ball to second base. Fitted by Cruz. Throws across for the out. You know, Victor Clay does such a good job over there at second base. And this this whole defense for Russ College, very smooth. Jaleep DeMar has been very good at third. Um, obviously, we've talked about Warren and how smooth he is at shortstop. And then Victor Clay has made some really good plays at second base as well for Russ College. They made it easy on Robinson over there at first base as well. Hadn't had to pick a lot. Hadn't had to move a lot over there at first to make catches and get outs. Yeah, they're very good middle infielders for sure. Here's Joel Malone. Takes a big swing and fouls one back. And I think it helps when your pitchers are in the strike zone, you're ready to field, anticipating the ball being hit as that one is hit into right center field. Stapleton there to make the catch. Damn, two easy outs. I mean, it's, it's, there's a huge difference in what we had from both of our starters. Kind of all over the place. A lot of Big counts, 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two counts, that type of stuff. Um, you know, for Evans and then on the other side for Wharf, they've just come in and thrown strikes, and it's led to some quick outs. I mean, our last now eight outs have been very, very fast here in this mm -hmm. ballgame after two really long innings there in the fourth and fifth inning. Namely, really long innings throughout with the starters, mm -hmm. like a lot of walks. Yeah. Um, the game really slowed down, had mound visits in between, either the coaches or the catchers to try to calm the pitchers down. So, yeah, like, uh, Olin Evans and, and Fabio Worf have really created a different pace to the game with their efforts today. And there's a drive hit deep to left field, and that ball is going to be off the foul pole, it looked like, for a home. No, it's not a home run. It hit off the top of the wall just below the foul pole for a double by Beto. Let's look at the replay here. I don't know, that's a home run. It looked like it hit the foul pole in the replay as we slow it down here. Oh, it yeah. definitely did hit the foul pole. That should be a home run. Yeah, that, that, that should be a home run. That's a big missed call, and that's, that's possibly two missed home run calls that we have seen down the line. And now we're going to have a Yeah, now the umpires are going to talk about it. Yeah. On the replay, clearly hit the – the foul pole down the left field line. There's a yeah, that's a home run. 
Yeah, it hit right off the bottom of the foul pole. Yeah, that, right off that Coca-Cola sign there. We saw one on day one, and now and, there we go. And now they're going to rule a home run by Beto. It's a one-run game now on a solo shot by him. And that's going to get Coach John Bates out of the dugout for Rust arguing. I mean, if you're an umpiring crew, you want to get the calls right. I mean, they, they had the conference and talked it over. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. we've seen, I mean they, they got the call right on that one. Yeah. That, was, that was a home run. It looked like a home run to us initially when, when they didn't call it. I was wondering if maybe we just didn't see it hit off that clock or something down there, but it easily hit off the foul pole. Uh, and credit to these umpires for getting together, getting the right call, and a big-time home run there from Beto. Cuts the lead in half, now 7-6, to six, and – it looked like Evans was about to cruise through this inning as well, and that's a big swing. Pull some momentum back over there in that pain dugout. Got to give this team a lot of credit. You know, they're taking on a group over here with Russ that has about 30-plus players on their roster. They're deep. They're number one seed coming in. They got 16 guys. You know, as we talked about, Hunter Justice is burned. Yeah, so they're definitely playing – behind from a numbers game standpoint and maybe a little bit talent standpoint, they've hung right in there with Rust. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, pretty much their last two, the starter from yesterday, starter from Wednesday, they're burned. So you really only got 14 other guys that can throw. Martinez now burned. So now you really only got 13 guys that can throw. And they're just finding a way to compete and stay in the game with the number one seed. And big strike out there from Evans to get out of the inning. Yeah, Camilo Martinez strikes out swinging, but – one run scores for Payne College on the home run by Jerry Beto to make the score now seven to six, Russ, as we move into the bottom half of the seventh inning in the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson. Back for the bottom of the seventh inning, 7-6 seven, Russ College over Payne College. Payne College getting a run in the top half of the inning on the home run by Beto. That was controversial at first because <laughs> initially the umpires called it foul when it replay showed it hit the, it hit the foul pole down the left field line. Uh, the, the most important part of that whole sequence was that they got the right call. You know, they ended up making the right call. Uh, not something that Payne will look back at and say, hey, if we'd have gotten that call, maybe the games didn't, you know. I mean, they ended up getting the right call, and that's exactly what you want from the umpires. I know that Coach Bates was not very happy with it after it happened, but if he does go back and watch this game, then, you know, he'll end up seeing, okay, that ball hit off the foul yeah. pole. And it was a home run. It was clear on our replay, so that's exactly what happened. Hit the bottom of the foul pole down the left field line. I'm sure his his problem with it was – you know, if, that, if it's that guy's call, why didn't he have it right in the first right, place? Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that's what he was probably the most upset with. There is no replay here. There's no talent system mm -hmm. here. So, got to rely on the eyes of the umpires on these situations. Fabio Wharf is on for a second inning of work. 
He's working the stone Teague. He's Teague's up in the count, three balls and two strikes. And he draws a leadoff walk. And that'll bring up Jalen Thomas, the catcher. Russ has scored seven runs in this ball game with just three hits. That's pretty incredible. And Thomas with a line drive to left field. That's going to get by the left fielder. Alexander and go all the way to the wall. Teague around third. He will score on the run scoring double by Jalen Thomas. Yeah, tough play out in left field. And then you can see the ball kind of got wedged right underneath the padding there on the wall. And if he just throws his hands up, that actually probably would have kept the runner the ground rule double, yeah. from being able to score. You see it right here. See how the ball gets wedged right there. Yeah. And so if, if he just throws his hands up instead of actually picking it out of there, umpire would have come out, checked. He would have seen, okay, it's lodged. Even though it was easy for him to pick it out, it's lodged, so that makes it a dead ball. Would have been second and third, but instead the runner comes around to score. But big piece of hitting right there. Just the fourth hit of the game for Rust. And there's a pop fly back of home plate, and it will reach the fifth roll. That's how things can even out, though, for you. You know, we saw Jalen Thomas hit a line shot to center field, didn't get down for a base hit. Right there, that ball hung a little bit, could have been caught, ends up getting down, and he's credited with an RBI double. Yeah, Deshaun Frank's the batter. He had a run scoring here this last time up. Also a big quick answer right there from Rust. You know, you give up the home run, they cut the lead in half, Really important to try to come back, get that momentum back, and they were able to do so in two batters here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and now a chance to add some more insurance runs and expand this lead a little bit with Payne down to their last six outs of the season. War from the stretch. Kicks and fires in the dirt. The ball gets away and moving to third base on that one. Is is Burden, who was the pinch runner, he's in scoring position at third base on the wild pitch by Wharf. Yeah, Jesse Burton coming in as a speed-up runner, great read. He saw that ball in the dirt and immediately takes off, and you better get a good read with Fernandez behind the plate. We've seen he has a really good arm. He's already thrown out three runners in this game. Burton able to get there, now 90 feet away from scoring, and the infield will come in, can't give him a run. So it will be important for Franks if he gets a strike here to try to get the ball elevated, get it towards the outfield where you give your runner a chance to maybe score on a sacrifice fly. A run already in for Russ. Trying to add more. And that misses outside, and Franks is going to draw a walk. So two walks in the inning to bring up Victor Clay. That's been – that's what's killed Payne. I mean, you talked about that before that last hit, only three hits, but it scored – Seven runs at that point, now four hits and eight runs and nine total walks between the two pitchers for Payne College. You just cannot put that many guys on base freely, and that is exactly what they've done. And now you got to feel like that Rust is going to have some kind of first and third play prepared right here. And it's an interesting situation for Payne also. you got to decide, do we want to try to get the double play uh, with the speedy Victor Clay up, or do we want to keep the infield in and make sure they don't score that run uh, but that would pretty much give them second base on a steal. And the runner goes. The throw goes through. It's cut off. And a stolen base by Franks, who's hopping on the base as he appeared to turn he's his out. ankle. And he's been tagged out. He appeared to, apparently injured himself on the slide in the second base. And in the process of showing that he was injured, hopping up and down the bases, he was tagged out. He is putting no pressure on that ankle. Yeah, we're going to see what happened here on the replay. You don't normally see that. They cut it off, but because of him hopping around on the bag, they ended up coming and tagging him out as he was in the middle of one of those hops. Let's see what happens. Slides in, yes, as he was trying to get up. 
as he was trying to get up, hurt his ankle. and Yeah, Cruz actually caught the throw from Fernandez. Great job and, by the shortstop and, and, and then as well. Wheeled, yeah, then wheeled around and, and, and threw it to D, Diaz. But the president of mind, the, the tag, Frank said he was hopping up and down at second base. So one away in the inning, runners at third base now. It's tough luck for Russ, but you also got to know there. I know, I know Franks was hurting a little bit after that whole play, but you can't just stand and there's behind a the back. Drive in the center field is going to fall in for a base hit. A run will score, and it's now 9-6 to six, Russ College on the hit by Clay. Yeah, and had Franks just been able to stay on second base, you would have another first and third situation, another chance for Russ to get another runner in scoring position here with a steal, and would still have nobody out. So if Worf can find a way to get a ground ball here, he could get out of the inning with a double play, but it is just the walks that continue to hurt this Payne College team. Here's Jalik DeMar now. Swings and misses for strike one. Clay leads at first base to pitch. Outside for a ball. The pitch by Wharf. Outside ball two. No action in the bullpen for Pan College. We mentioned before, like they're short of a yeah. pitching staff, so. Whoever at the route there has got to give extended innings. Or for long hold, the pitch. Off speed pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Two and two the count. Two balls and two strikes. Clay runs the pitch. There's a high pop-up. Foul ground right side. The first baseman makes the catch. Two outs. Here's the Mario Morham now to bat for Rust. With two outs and one on. If you're Wharf, you want to limit the damage as much as possible. Try to keep your team within striking distance heading into the top of the eighth inning. And you do that by throwing strikes. He did a good job of that last inning. This inning, a couple walks have hurt him. And then the single up the middle by Victor Clay. Warren has had a really good day, though, out of the nine-hole spot. You know, anytime you're going to try to score a lot of runs and have success offensively. You got to have one through nine. Yeah, and think about Russ College. They they average more than seven runs a game during the regular season, and that just goes to show you how long their lineup is. One through nine can hurt you, and they've done that so far in this World Series and in this game so far. Another strike. Two balls and a strike. Clay leads at first base. The pitch. Outside, ball three. Payne College pitchers have been behind the count a lot in this one. A lot of three ball counts. Has given Russ a chance at the plate. And Gus is outside for a ball. Another walk. That'll bring up Shamar Stapleton. First and second, two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Two runs are in in the inning for Russ College. Wharf fires 
a foul back by Stapleton. A smash to third that's caught on a fly by Martinez to end the inning. Two run score, two men left on base. We go into the top half of the eighth inning with Russ College leading Payne College 9-6 at the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson. We're back for the top half of the eighth inning of this one between Rust College and Payne College. Rust College leading nine to six. I'm Kendrick Marshall along with Caleb Brooks on the call of this one. The winner of this game will play Florida Memorial later on today in the NAIA championship game for the right to go to the Black Colors World Series final tomorrow. Yeah, coming up after this one, you'll have Edward Waters, the defending Black College World Series champions, taking on Albany State, the one seed. Brown ball to a third, and DeMar throws out Alexander for the first out of the top of the eighth inning. That'll be a rematch of a day one matchup between Edward Waters and Albany State. That was a great game. I mean, it was two to one, at the bottom of the eighth inning, Albany State, a couple of bunts laid down that Edward Waters had some trouble with, and that led to yeah. Albany State taking a 3-2 lead, holding on to win, and put the defending champs in the loser's bracket. And then winner of this one will play Florida Memorial later on tonight. See who can get to tomorrow, 5 p.m. right here at Riverwalk Stadium. And as we've said, come out tomorrow, 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. A lot of festivities going on. There will be a cook-off, uh, going to be a home run derby. There will be music play. I mean, Anything you can ask for, it's going to be a great atmosphere and a really fun day to come out here and enjoy some great baseball. It would be a much bigger crowd with it being a Saturday game. There's a ground ball to short. Warren again. The pick on the other end for the out. Yeah, outside of the home run, Olin Evans has been really good out of the bullpen for Russ yeah. College. They needed it. Brighton Sampson had a good first inning, but as we talked about, he threw yesterday. They had the very, very long bottom of the fourth inning when he came in, uh, and he just didn't bounce back in that top of the fifth inning as well. But Olin Evans has come in and really settled things down here for Russ College on the mound. So if you're John Bates, you win this one today, how do you play it for – Later on tonight, like, what are your strategy be for your pitching staff, you think? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, I've already seen Xavier Campbell went down there to go get warmed up. He's already thrown the last two days. Um, you know, Evans is probably going to be burned after throwing yesterday and then throwing today as well uh, here in this game. You're probably not going to be able to bring Sampson back as well. So you're going to start really getting into that deep part 
of the bullpen here for Russ College, but a quick inning there from Olin Evans, and that's what they need. They need Evans to be able to last this next inning as well and make it where they don't have to go to anybody else in the bullpen, but that's why you don't want to end up in the loser's bracket as well. Stresses out that pitching, makes you have to play the extra game, and that's kind of what you're seeing here from Russ College. Yeah, no runs in the eighth inning for Payne College. We go into the bottom half of the inning with Russ leading 9-6, the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Back live here in Montgomery with Russ College leading Payne College 9-6 here. First pitch swing and there's a base hit to left field by Malik Berrien who made a big turn around first base and heads back after the smash toward the shortstop. Daza who could not handle the hot shot. That was a rough sequence for the middle infield period right there as Daza kind of sidestepped that one, let it get to the outfield, and then saw the second baseman, Cruz, just kind of let the ball go right by him and had first baseman not run over there and grab the ball. That could have led to another extra base there for Rust. Here's Khalil Robinson now. Throw over to first to check on Berrien. You may think with a 3-1 lead that Russ may be moving here on the bases. Yeah, they're definitely going to try to add to this lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Robinson, he's got a great-looking swing. He's got a big lead at the first base, too, and there he goes. The pitch hit up the middle. Field about a shortstop. Tried to step on the back at second base for the force play. Didn't get it, but throws the force to get out. Robinson. It's a good thing they had the hit and run on, or it would have been a double play easily. He just beat it there at second base. You see it right here, right before that foot touches. Great call there by the umpire. And so it works out for Rust, hit and run. Gets the runner to second base, and now Stone Teague will step into the box. He's got a good-looking swing from the left side and will look to get into one and Try to add to this three-run lead here for Russ in the bottom of the eighth inning, get some insurance. Yeah, Teague walked and scored his last time up. There goes the runner again, pitch fouled away. We saw that earlier, too, on an attempted double steal. The batter swung and fouled it off, had the runners have to go back. And you're taught, you're ta you know, you got to be able to see that. That guy's in front of you. Yeah. You're, you're looking at the pitcher. You can see the runner. When you see him get that good of a jump, you got to take the pitch and let him get the bag. Yeah, Barron had a running start almost from second base and was disappointed he didn't get out between the steal that bag as, as Teague fouled the ball away. No, he'd have been there easily. I think that yeah. you know that's what they were both so frustrated. And Teague looked to the dugout and was like, "Look, it's my fault. I know, yeah. you know." And you're up there with a hitter's mindset, but you've got to be able you got to have you got to be able to see more than just you and the pitcher up there. It can't be tunnel vision. That pitch misses outside. Two balls and a strike.
And Worf steps off to try to hold Barian back. Teague hits a foul ball left side. If Russ can add a, another run, it'll it'll put them in a position where a grand slam doesn't beat them in, in the in the top half of the ninth inning. Two balls and two strikes. Barry and dancing off second base. And Worf throws to second. Burying back easy on the dive. The pitch fouled away again by Teague. Yeah, nobody up in the Russ bullpen either, so it looks like it will be Olin Evans' game to finish, as it should be. He's come in and only given up one run on the solo home run with two outs there in the top of the seventh inning. Teague continues to foul him off, and you can tell he's just missing, just yeah. kind of pulling off that pitch a little bit. All those balls have been up and away, and when you're fouling him off to this side over here, it means you're not really staying through the ball, kind of pulling off a little bit, and it's catching that top part of the bat instead of you hitting through it and being able to barrel it up. The 2-2 again. Outside 3-2. and two. And they've also kind of shown with how they've pitched them in this at bat, they're trying to attack that outside part of the plate. And so you got to know here, you got to make an adjustment and you got to start thinking going to left field as a lefty, right field as a righty. I'm trying to keep them close to second. Again, he it again. Just pulling off that pitch a little bit. It's making it where he's catching it off the end of the bat. I'm surprised they haven't tried to go inside once to Teague. The 3 2 pitch again. In the dirt, he walks. Yeah, good at bat. A lot of pitches there. Fouled off a couple of two strike pitches. And ends up getting the free pass down to first base. If my numbers are right, it's the 10th walk of the day for this pain pitching staff, and that's just what they couldn't afford. And, and the one game that they've won in this tournament, Hunter Justice just didn't put a lot of guys on base. He threw strikes, he attacked the zone, and that's what you need from your pitching staff. And can't really have a situation like this where you've only given up six total hits today, but you've already given up nine runs. And Chance for some more to come across here. And the runners go. Throw goes to third base, and the runner is safe. And it looked like Thomas might, excuse me, Fernandez might have thrown out the runner at third base. Check the replay. Yeah, he's in there. And he just barely got in there. I'm not even sure that the tag ever even was applied. So Thomas with a chance to break the game open right here. On the ground, in the left field, that's a base hit. Two runs are going to score, and it's 11-6, to six, Russ College, on the two-run single by Jalen Thomas. Yeah, I really enjoy watching Jalen Thomas play. Really good catcher. You can tell he is a... Vocal leader for this team. I'm looking into the Russ dugout. They have chairs <laughs> and a cardboard box as part of their post-run celebration. <laughs> yeah, having fun in the dugout. That's what it's all about. You know, if you're not going to be part of the game, find some way to help your team, whether it's looking for signs from the opposing team's coach, you know, trying to catch on to something you see from the pitcher that can help your batters or just providing energy for your team as well. And, that dugout has been lively throughout this ball game. They've had a reason to. Since inning number four, they've had a lot of success offensively. Five in the fifth, fourth inning, two in the fifth, two in the seventh, and now two here in the eighth. Is there the drive to left field by Burton, who came on the pinch run, now bats, but he flies out to the left fielder, Alexander, for the second out of the inning. 
Here's Victor Clay. He's been in the middle of pretty much all the scoring for Russ College today. He's going to bat in this inning with another runner on base. It appears unless Payne College comes back with another five-run rally that Russ is going to move on to play later on tonight. There's a ground ball base hit the left field by Clay. Yeah, and I'm sure that's a matchup that they're excited about. You know, they fall on day one to Florida Memorial, seven to four. And so you know that this group has got to be hungry to get back and play them again, try to get some redemption. They will have beaten, if they can beat Florida Memorial, they would have beaten everybody in their division here in this tournament. I mean, Russ was the number one seed for a reason. Mm -hmm. They have a deep offensive team, and so they've displayed that with 11 runs today. And they're going to need it to, to battle the firepower of Florida Memorial. Jalik DeMar tried to add another one here for Russ. And there's a base hit to left field. And another run scores, and it is 12 to 6 Rust. Craig Randolph, who pinched ran, comes home from second base on the run scoring hit by DeMar. It looks like we're going to get a visit to the mound, and interested to see if maybe if they do make a pitching change, is it something that's within the field? Do they send someone from the pitch onto the field and bring in a position player to pitch? I think it might be because no one was warming up in the bullpen this inning. So if a change is made, it's going to be somebody from the field or bench area. Well, and you then, know, you got you got two outs in the inning, and unless it just continues to get more disastrous, you've got to kind of let War finish it and see what you can do offensively. There is now action in the bullpen for Payne College. You have Vladimir Lemos warming up. Lemos is an infielder. As you mentioned before, like the lack of depth here for Payne College yeah, limits I mean, their options. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're built kind of like what, you know, a small high school team would be built like where you pretty much better have everybody on the team prepared to be able to pitch. And with only 16 players on the roster, that's kind of the situation they're in. You hope for Payne that maybe making it to a World Series like this can give them some recognition, get them some more players. And you know, here in two or three years, maybe you look down and they've got – 26, 27 players on their roster and a lot deeper pitching staff where they can come and have a chance to win an event like this. They knew coming in, though, with what they had, it was going to be – they were going to have their work cut out for them, and they really needed to win yesterday to set themselves up to have a chance today to make it to the championship game. It was definitely going to be a hard road for sure for them to try to advance, but they did a good job advancing as far as they did in this tournament. For oh, sure. no doubt. I still got three outs to play with, but with the way Olin Evans has been throwing, it's going to make it really tough for them to score six runs at least in the ninth inning to try and tie this ball game up, and that is if they don't give up any more damage right here. Here's Warren, the batter. He takes outside, one ball and a strike. First and second for, Payne, for Russ College. Trying to add to their 12-6 lead. Twelve runs, nine hits, no errors for Russ College. Six runs, six hits, two errors for Payne. There's a ground ball to short stop. It's fielded by Dazzler. Steps on the bag at second for the out. Three-run score in the inning for Russ College. And they extend it to a 12-6 advantage over Payne College. The 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson.
Back for the top of the ninth inning with Russ College leading Payne College 12 to 6. Payne down to their last three outs in this one. Olin Evans on, still in relief. There's a ground ball to the shortstop Warren. He fields and fires for the out. Yeah, two pitches, one out. Can't beat that. That's what Olin Evans has been doing. He's just come in and thrown strikes and has kept his team where they are outside of the one solo home run. He did a really good job of coming in. Interesting mound visit. Yeah, John. After getting the first out of the inning. Yeah, John Bates is out. Talk to his pitcher. It's like coming out. There is some throwing going on in the Russ bullpen. You may think he, he may want to save well, Evans well, for later on. No. Leave him in. So oh, he's yeah, gonna players stay. were starting to come out of the dugout and look like they were preparing for him to be taken out of the ball game, but they're going to leave him in. You know, you talk about you know maybe wanting him to come back later today. I don't know that throwing two more outs here in this ball. I mean, he just got you know one out and two pitches. I don't know that that would save his arm much more throwing you know what five six less pitches yeah. at the rate he's been going at. So. Here's Raul Guerrero, the batter. He takes a strike. I mean, we know the Rust offense has been sparkling today, but you got to give credit to Olin Evans coming in oh, yeah. and stemming the tide for the ball club. Yeah, no, I mean, he settled this game down. You know, I mean, it was 5-0. to zero. All of a sudden, Payne climbs right back in the ball game, makes it 5-5, five to five, took a lot of momentum over on their side, and Olin Evans coming in, throwing strikes the way that he has. Kept them where they were, allowed them to take a 7-5 to five lead. He gave up the solo home run with two outs there in the seventh. And besides that, uh, really hadn't had any trouble on the mound. Ground ball wide of third. What are you there for? Yeah, the bullpens are in play here at Riverwalk Stadium. Yeah, the protector wasn't doing his job down there. Three balls and two strikes to pitch, and that's going to be ball four. So Guerrero was aboard with one away. That'll bring up Dominique Page, who earlier in the game had a big three-run double that tied the score at five. But then Russ College able to pull away in the, the seventh and the eighth inning. But at the time, his hit was one of the biggest of the day. takes a strike. <laughs> Evans fires. There's a fly ball to center field. Bearing back makes the catch. Two away. Yeah, Page has some good power, though. You can tell that ball kind of kept carrying out there on Barry, and he was expecting it to go right to him, had to move back a little bit. See right there late. That ball just kept kind of drifting on him. Here's Jamel Jarrell Malone, the final hope of the afternoon for Payne College. He takes a strike. You can even tell in this inning, like Olin Evans is – Kind of just taking a lot off. He's just throwing it in there. There's a line drive foul down the left field line. Not really trying to overthrow or really throw 100%. I mean, he's yeah. just he's just laying it in there. And, and here here's some strikes, y'all. See if y'all can hit it and try to get back in the ball game. And so far, I hadn't really been able to do that. A couple of hard hit balls in the inning. With the six-run lead, that's what you want to do. Yo two pitch misses down and in. And that pitch misses. Two balls and two strikes. Payne College down to the last out. Looking to move on to the NAIA championship round this Black Colors World Series. Ooh. And Ray throws the pitch behind Malone. 
We see players from Edward Waters University getting ready to come onto the field. They're up next in day three of the Black Colors World Series. There's a line drive hit just foul down the left field line. Should be a fun matchup coming up. Edward Waters, Albany State. And then another rematch. Both semifinals look like it'll be the one seed taking on the four seed. The 3 2 pitch fouled away again. Florida Memorial, your four seed in the NAIA division. And then Edward Waters, your four seed in the Division II part. Both of them getting into the semifinal. Florida Memorial out of the winner's bracket. Edward Waters having to climb out of the loser's bracket to get this matchup with Albany State. Edward Waters defending Black College World Series champions as Malone stays alive again on a 3-2 pitch. And they've made him throw a lot of pitches since that mound visit. Two 3-2 counts. Now I hear a couple of foul balls. Malone trying to Stay alive. Never know what can happen. Baseball is a crazy sport. The 3 2 hit on the ground. DeMar knocks it down, picks it up, throws across for the out, and that's the ball game. Russ College has beaten Payne College 12 6 to move on to the NAIA final of the Black College World Series. Fun game. Got to give Payne credit. You know, you kind of get punched in the mouth. You give up five runs at the bottom of the fourth. Great response in the top of the fifth to come back and tie it back up. Uh, but then Russ show them why they're the number one seed. They scored two in the bottom of that inning to get back up seven to five. Uh, you know, you thought the solo home run may be about to get Payne some momentum, get them back in it a little bit. But, uh, you know, Russ immediately in the bottom of that inning scores two runs. They had three insurance runs in the bottom of the eighth. And uh, offensive firepower just a little bit too much for Payne. And, too many free passes from the Payne pitching staff as well. I think that was the story of the ball game here. Just way too many walks, a couple of hit by pitches, and uh, you allow this rush team to get on the base pass, they're going to make you pay with how they run bases, steal bases, uh, and how active they are out there. And that's what you see with them able to find 12 runs off only nine hits, taking advantage of this Payne pitching staff. And it won't be as easy later on this afternoon when they take on Florida Memorial. Florida Memorial really good pitching staff and uh, has only had to work his staff for two games. So he's going to have plenty of pitching ready to go for tonight. Uh, it should be another fun matchup. So we're about to have two rematches from day one coming up here this afternoon with our two semifinal games. Yeah, one half of the final is set. We'll wait for the other half. 12-6 um, the final in this one. Russ College moving on over Payne College. Uh, six runs, six hits, two errors for Payne. Twelve runs, nine hits, no errors for Rust in this one. It was a pleasure. No, enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Still more baseball to come at the 2023 Black College World Series presented by Tyson. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now. Mobile banking from Truist actually works for you. It gives you simple, smart, personalized insights to keep you one step ahead. Because we think that's the kind of control you deserve over your money. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist. Download the mobile app now.
Oh, my bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just enjoying the intro there. Uh, Boys on Hill podcast. Yes. I am a mod. I almost flipped my computer. Without we got, AKA five thousand watts. Yeah, who switch sides? Yeah, stat man kind of messed up my <laughs> intro. Then we got <laughs> Slim Marshall. He just got through calling the game. Uh, we just got through watching Russ and Payne College. Um, extremely long game. Yeah. Extremely long game. Yeah, extremely long game. Extremely long game. Extremely high scoring game. Um, Russ College game. won this one 12 to 6, aided a lot by walks from Payne College. Payne had 13 walks mm. as a staff, so they only used two <laughs> pitchers because their roster only had 16 players. So Man. they were yeah. behind from, from Jump Street from a roster standpoint, a talent standpoint. But ironically enough, the first four innings, there were no runs scored despite all the base runners on, out there. Both starting pitchers were able to get out of trouble. But then the bottom of the fourth inning happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Russ College was able to score five runs in that inning, um, and they were able to pull away and add some more. Um, had multiple run innings of, of multiple runs being scored, which kind of put the game away. And it's been a story of the entire tournament for all the games played. There's much of the winners. They have the big inning, and Russ definitely had a big inning in this one. Long game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was just real outstanding. I, you know, shout out to Payne College. They brought the pain, but uh they they was out man in this one. But at the same time they, they they stood up for the state of Georgia, for their institution and it just really just did an outstanding showing for this uh this year's World Series. And then as for Russ, uh hey, they start they they electrifying man. They having fun man. You, y'all see the swagger out there man. They got the, the chest out. They saying team the way they, chest out. Yeah, but those yeah. of you who have not they, been watching them play yeah. or not been watching y'all the see games, the swagger with them boys playing with. Russ Russ has like one button on their jersey and the rest of just out. Some of yeah. them have an undershirt. Some don't. Don't yeah. even care. So team chest out. Mississippi yeah. boys. Yeah, they got a drop country. top. Yeah, the drop <laughs> top. They got that. You can tell that's Mississippi. That's, yeah. a, that's some Mississippi country stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, it is, man. But shout out. We got to shout out a few praise for <laughs> us. For one, we found out over the break, man, that. We actually, got family on the team. Yes, one of the B5s, man. One of our brothers, Ark and Chilion, got a nephew. They're playing for Russ. Actually, the leadoff hitter. Leadoff hitter. Yeah, Shamar Stapleton. So, yes. yeah, and actually had an outstanding game. He went two nephew. for four. Two RBIs, you know, uh, way, uh, uh. way to represent. Uh, yeah. But we go get you again, get thrown out at third, though. We, we'll talk to you <laughs> about that. We, yeah, right. yeah, we'll get you on that one. But good job, nephew. Good job. My personal favorite off of Russ is um, the catcher because his last name is Thomas, by the way. Hey. He had three RBIs that game. That was yeah. my highlight for the game. Well, other highlight is Payne College. Mm-hmm. Payne has like three players on the roster. Mm-hmm. And – for those out there who are looking for a school to play, yes. if you want to go play for HBCU squad, look up Payne College. Yep. They have 18 spots available on their roster. Yep. Um, they had no bench. Um, all their players was – all the pitchers come from the players on the infield, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what it yeah. looked like. Yeah. Um, the starting pitcher last night ended up being the closing pitcher for them today. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he pitched four innings last night, and he pitched – Three innings today. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, Fabio Wharf came in three innings pitch, gave up six hits, five earned runs, four walks. I mean, like because of the lack of depth they have mm-hmm. on their pitching staff, like he had to pitch as long as he could. Yeah, yeah. Right. But hey, those those players coming out the portal, coming out, you know, seniors in high school. Hey, y'all you hit up Coach some, Kirby Marshall, man. If you need somewhere to yes. play, yes. You see, yeah. the team is a legitimate team. Hey. They're playing in the Black College World Series. Yes. And they have four players. Well, I, I, yeah. gave, I gave them two more from last time I quoted. Yeah, they had yeah. two players last time. I got four players this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they have positions, and they have room for players. Yeah. If there's a a, a, a kid out there who think that they got you what it takes, you think you want to play baseball, there's a spot on the HBCU that you should look at. And yeah. It's parents. Now, I'm not talking just the kid. I'm talking to the parents. Mm-hmm. Look up Payne College. It's yeah. a good school, good institution. They play good baseball. They're in the Black College World Series. You're going to play good teams. Give them a try. Give them a shout. Yeah. Holler at coach. Make the connections. They're, they they have places for you to play. Exactly. And Augusta, Georgia, what can you be better? Augusta, Georgia, you get to go see the Masters and everything. So Ain't that yeah. where James Brown from? Yes, it is. Yeah. So if James yeah. Brown can be from Augusta, I think it's good enough for you to go play baseball in Augusta. Exactly. So um, next game we got, I'm very excited for this next game we got Man. going on. We got Albany State against um, Edward Waters. Yeah. And Edward Waters, 
has been the squad for me this tournament because mm-hmm. simple fact is they only pitched four pitches the whole entire tournament. And that's going to become their strength down the line. Hopefully um, this will be their advantage in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, Albany State is a powerhouse. Albany State is a great team. Uh, but Edward Waters has shown a lot of flair. Yeah. And Edward Waters is um, my personal favorite in the tournament so far. They have won me over in this tournament. Yeah. Um, and their jerseys are fly right now, too. They are. They, they are. got the off-whites with the orange hats. <laughs> so, um, if you ain't got anything to do and you want to watch baseball, hey, this next game is probably going to be one of the best. Well, I hope will be one of the best games out of the whole entire tournament exactly. just because of the stakes and what's going to be the outcome. Yeah. Um, so, we are about to wrap this up. And I think all three of us are going to call the next game. Yeah, hey, we'll be on the broadcast, yeah. Yeah. So, we mm-hmm. all is going to be on this next game, which means it's going to be party time for the boys <laughs> on the hill. <laughs> yes, this will be the first time the whole tournament we are all going to be on the game at the same time. And I cannot wait because some fact is when we get together, hey, I'm telling you, it's going to be magic. It always magic. Yeah. And if you haven't seen our podcast, Boys on the Hill podcast on YouTube, uh, we got Facebook page. We got um, Instagram page, come holler at us, Twitter. Come watch our shows. If you enjoyed us this weekend at this tournament, we do this every week. We do yeah. a show on baseball every week. You come in and enjoy us. Get ready for the next game. We got Edward Waters. We got Albany State. I'm hype. I'm geek. And Let's we see go. y'all next game. It's Boys on the Hill Podcast. See you, baby. Peace, everyone.